Hi, this is Derek Davis, and welcome to Lunch of Art at the Ely Museum in beautiful Pompano Beach. Today, we're going to be talking about the, one of the best students, or the best student for Miss Ely in 1927. And we're going to be talking to her son, Michael Algernon Johnson, to learn about why the eighth grade was important and how she developed a personal friendship with Blanche Ely. Okay, welcome, Micah, and thank you for coming to be with us. And we're going to be talking about your mother and who was the best student in 1927. So tell us a little bit about her. Oh, yes, that would be my mother. Which is, her name was, uh, we call her Madea. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Born uh, May 10th, uh, 1908. Mm -hmm. uh, during that particular time of the 20s, that was the uh, time the pilot program for educating African Americans here in the Pompano Beach area. Okay. And that was uh, spearheaded by, by Mrs. Blanche, General yes. Boyd. Yes. <laughs> okay. And you mentioned General Boyd. We were talking about a time before she married Professor Correct. Ely. So she was not in Ely yet. And what a lot of people don't know that she was a boy. Correct. Uh, and you'll be able to show that from even the, the graduation papers from your mother in 1927, that she was Blanche General Boyd. That is correct. And with her signature on that certificate as well. That was uh, February 1927. Okay. 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 That particular time, uh, our mother, mm -hmm. she was part of the class, which was a uh, pilot. I don't mm -hmm. say experimental, but at that time, when they're going beyond the sixth grade. Yes. They, in order to go to the, the uh, senior years, you had to mm -hmm. go to the eighth grade. Mm -hmm. So in other words, there were two years that was added on. Yes. And I think what a lot of people don't understand that we're talking about at a time where most children in agriculture communities were only going to the sixth grade. So to go beyond the sixth grade was really an event. And so you're saying Ms. Ely started a pilot program to get an eighth grade and your mother was the best student of that eighth grade class in 1927. Correct, the um, salutary yes. of that particular class. Yes, then, now we would probably call it a valedictorian, but then it was just called a uh, celebratory. That is correct. Yes, uh, yes, okay. Uh, she, uh, right after that particular time, after the graduation mm -hmm. from that level of uh, education, she then married uh, our father, mm -hmm. which is Reverend Aaron E. Johnson. Okay. Uh, from them came 10 children. That was uh, Bertha, William, Joseph, Montford, Oliver, Blanche. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then, uh, Name after Blanche. Yeah. Katrina, mm -hmm. Olivia, Michael, what's that? It's yeah, and Couture. Okay. Now, did we, we mention your mother's maiden name? Because we keep calling her Johnson. Who was it? That is Richardson. She was a Richardson. Okay. Yeah. She was the child of. Two children from uh, that would be that would be the uh, Captain William Richardson, mm -hmm. one of the other pioneers. His name is out on one of the uh, pyramids in front of the Olson Center. Yes, and also Olivia Stubbs Richardson. Okay, because you mentioned me. How long has your family been in Pompano? Over one hundred and ten years. Oh, wow. In South in South Florida. In South Florida. Okay. Correct. Okay. They migrated from the Bahama Islands in Nassau mm -hmm. to. Dade County, Miami, the Coconut Grove area, and came up statewide to Broward County in the early 1900s. Okay. My grandmother and grandfather were born in the year 1896. Okay. Wow. Her father was from West Africa. Mm. Oh. Okay. okay. So you've got a lot of history yeah. Uh, yeah, to, to share in this community. Right. But let's go back to that, that class in 1927. Because again, I said, a lot of people don't, they don't think of an eighth grade as being a significant portion of uh, schooling. But when we talk about in the days where agriculture did you just went to the sixth grade, grade, eighth grade was a big step. Because that's saying we're preparing you to even go beyond just being an agriculture ag agricultural worker. We're going to prepare you to be able to do other things in life. Because uh, even when we look at the history of uh, Fort Lauderdale, Fort Lauderdale for the white students, they didn't get an eighth grade until um, it was uh, uh, 1911. Well, I said 1911, but eight, the eighth grade actually started uh, a little before that. It started in about 
five is going. In 1905, when they were dredging the canals, you start getting a different level of, of people into the community. And many of them came and they were used to more education for their children. So they started pushing, and I think when they, in, in that year, in it was 1905, 1906, they got an eighth grade and they, the white schools actually start competing against the other schools uh, in there. That's when they came with that, that flying L for the Fort Lauderdale mm -hmm. students. Oh. But we're talking with the black students, they were still limited to, um, to sixth grade until, the, but when you're saying, well, to sixth grade until Joseph Ely actually started going beyond the sixth grade in 1924 at Dillard. But then you're saying that Blanche did a pilot program here to start in 1927, that she also worked to get students up to that eighth grade level, which means they were preparing you for uh, the, the city to grow, the city to, for black people to be a part of other things in the community rather than just in the farm life. So, so, so can you tell us a little bit more about uh, her and that experience of being that uh, best student in uh, the, that grade in, in, in 1927? She spoke in her um, speech, mm -hmm. which was seven pages long, mm -hmm. about dignity and honor mm -hmm. and being respected through the community because of that pilot program that they were honored to be a part of. Okay. And mm -hmm. hope that everybody would be satisfied with, with she and her fellow students as well. Did they come? And also, they it's mentioned in the speech as well about the agricultural part of it. Um, most of the uh, emphasis was put on the harvest here, mm -hmm. beans and pepper, mm -hmm. and the labor was used to get it to market. Mm -hmm. Most of your neighborhoods were uh, in African American uh, neighborhood areas were close to the railroad track. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, we probably already know that the fight club who bought their railroad through 1908 through this area. And that's when uh, most of the bikes migrated here. Yes. They set homestead up near the railroad track mm -hmm. because of access to the uh, trains. Okay. And I think she used some of her education to even help her with some of the agricultural things. You, know, you showed me a book of some of the records she kept of, uh, of, a, of a whole family life. There was a lot of things in there. But part of it was the collection uh, of the money that the family was collecting through working in, in the fields. Can you tell us a little bit about that book? Uh, the book had most of the first part of the uh, children that they had during that time. Uh, they did pick beans, pepper, mm -hmm. and she kept the laws of mm -hmm. what was made that particular day and was tallied up at the end of the month. Mm -hmm. That's how the bills were paid. Okay. Uh, two of the brothers, uh, William and also Joseph, they left at an early age and joined the Air Force to mm -hmm. eliminate themselves away from that. Uh, that that lifestyle. That harsh lifestyle. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. But uh, the whole but the whole family contributed to the family budget. Right. That That's correct. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because that yeah that was a, a wonderful time because you're thinking about the children uh, starting very mm -hmm. very early age, but they were actually contributing to the household income. Correct. And, and your mother had shows that in the record and shows some other things. She shows in there her grocery shopping mm -hmm. and how much it costs to get things. Uh, so it was a lot in it because it, it, it was one sheet that I was really impressed with. She not only had the groceries, but she had like the the item number. You're right. right. For the <laughs> Very sufficient. Yes. Uh, yeah. uh -huh. Also news uh, bulletins were written into the uh, log as well, such mm -hmm. as uh, the passing of uh, President Roosevelt. 1945 okay. that was wow. written in kept as a log as well okay so the history and also the present and the present time was also recorded okay so they okay. kept up with information yep and and apparently your mother actually became you know i guess she was taught by blanche Ely. she was part of the pro program but what was the relationship with blanche Ely after uh after graduating now later right? uh, the relationship with uh miss Ely was that at my parish, mm -hmm. which one of the oldest churches in the Pompano Beach area, I, our father started pastoring through the preacher. Okay. Started out at my parish. Mm -hmm. Later on, membership went to Salter's Chapel, okay. which became Greater Bethel A and Me. Okay. Here in Pompano Beach, Florida. Those are two of the uh, pioneer churches in the uh, Pompano Beach area. Mm -hmm. uh, my parish, Bethel A and Me Church, and also uh, Antioch Missionary Baptist which I'm a member of right now. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. But your mother had a personal relationship with, I mean, was they, were they become friends or just? 
Uh, uh, Mrs. Ely would call our, our mother and discuss church business, okay. information like that. Um, when it came to the children, she knew every last one of us. Because all of y'all went to school. <laughs> right. I can be going to class. She can say, Johnson, come here. Oh, okay. Just about she knew I was a Johnson. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, our parents sent uh, four of us to Florida Hill University, which is the alumni of uh, Miss Blanche Ely okay. as well. You know, we stayed with the orange and the green. Oh. <laughs> I, I was healed in Tallahassee, uh -huh. the state of Florida. Okay, that's how that worked out. So it was back and forth, even up to uh, aging, senior citizen ages that they were. Mm -hmm. uh, our father, Reverend Albert E. Johnson, was also president of PTA. Yeah. We, have to, just, yeah, we have to come and, and talk a little bit more about him at uh, another time, but that's, that's really, really great that it happened. And I just wanted to, uh, to and, and a few closing remarks, I wanted to talk about the fact that the school that she, your mother actually went to was the one that we now kind of call the, the well, Miss Ely called it, the jib joint. <laughs> so most of the education was at the, uh, at the jib jump joint when it was just a uh, one big room, I think, or and then, but when she graduated, they'd actually go, went to the, the Salsters Temple uh, because of the hurricane, the hurricane destroyed right. the building. That was the hurricane of 1926, yeah. destroyed the building. Uh, the building itself was on Rock Road, mm -hmm. if you're familiar with that name, which became Hammondville Road. Mm -hmm. In present time now, it's called Martin Luther King Boulevard. Mm -hmm. Wow, yes. Uh -huh. um, also, she did, uh, she was concerned, Miss was concerned about the politics in Buffalo Beach as well. Okay. You had um, first commissioner, which was Carl Weaver, mm -hmm. and uh, he was also a member of Delta Amy Church as yeah, well. So the church was in. Uh, then E. Pat Markins, oh. uh, another graduate alumnus of uh, Lanchita High School. Lanchita High School, okay. So and, uh, and, and, and there was a lot more we can talk to you about, and we're going to do it. We're going to bring it in for another session where we can talk some more. But thank you for letting us know about your mother, about that eighth grade, the pilot program for eighth grade here in Pompano, uh, and being eighth grade being a very important grade. grade. So we like to thank you for being with us, sharing that, and invite you again so we can learn some more about the rich history of uh, the African-Americans in Pompano. Thank you for coming. You are.